Welcome to this series of webinars on COVID-19 recorded on behalf of the European Respiratory Society and the Prepare EU Pandemic Preparedness Project. We have a number of excellent speakers from European Centre for Diseases Control, the WHO and other clinical and research experts who will speak on a variety of topics. We will continue to update the series. We are very grateful to you for contributing questions via the website and social media. We have divided these questions into themes such as virology, global surveillance, infection control, protection of healthcare workers, clinical care and therapies and their outcomes, and vaccine preparation. Our experts will address these as relevant in their presentations or subsequently. So hello, uh, my name is uh, Pasi Pentinen. I'm an expert here at the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control. And I'll be talking over the next uh, 15 minutes or so uh, about the current coronavirus disease um, outbreak, which is ongoing in China and, and seems to be expanding also in the region and, and globally. Those of you who have been working for a, a longer time like, like me will remember the, the SARS uh, outbreak starting in, in China in 2003, which caused 8,000 cases around the world and almost 800 deaths in those with, with quite important localized outbreaks there. And also the uh, Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome virus outbreak, MERS coronavirus outbreak, which uh, has been ongoing in the Middle East for a couple of years now and is, is continuing to cause outbreaks as spillover from uh, camels to the human populations. Now, late December um, 2019, we picked up signals uh, from China that there are uh, important clusters of individuals being detected in the city of Wuhan with an atypical pneumonia-like uh, presentations. Our Chinese colleagues were picking these up uh, because they have set up an impressive nationwide system uh, of surveillance for atypical pneumonia to detect early clusters of avian influenza cases. Um, since the first uh, detections in the city of Wuhan, where most of these cases seem to be connected to a um, seafood market, a live animal market in, in, in the city, um, the situation has quite dramatically um, expanded. As of the 13th of February, uh, yesterday when we are recording this, uh, we have had almost 60,000 cases um, reported uh, across the globe, uh, most of them from, from China and the uh, overwhelming majority from the city of Wuhan or the province of Hubei where, where Wuhan uh, is situated in. On this map, you will see it as the largest dot in the center of um, China over here. But do note that the, the size of the dot is restricted. So actually, the, the numbers from uh, Wuhan are much higher than you see from any of the other provinces um, in China. Yesterday, um, we received an important update from, from China. Over 15,000 new cases under their confirmed cases category. And you will see that as a spike in this, this um, epi curve. Um, this created quite a lot of, of noise in the media and on, on social media. But the explanation for this important spike is that due to what we understand is a, a limitation in their testing capacity in the city of, of um, Wuhan, uh, they have decided now to include in their confirmed category also uh, individuals who have been uh, diagnosed only based on uh, atypical pneumonia with uh, CT computed tomography uh, findings that are consistent with, with that. Outside of China, we have had um, roughly uh, 500 cases uh, reported. Um, the 
overarching trend if you disregard the orange bars on this epi curve of cases outside of China has not been increasing over the last uh, few days or, or week. Um, and this may be due to those dramatic measures that the Chinese local and national authorities have been taking. The, the city of Wuhan and a number of other cities with multi-million uh, size populations have had uh, restrictions put in place in uh, travel, in transports, in workplaces and schools not, not opening and in many of these cities in a total quarantine of all the individuals into their homes um, for the, their time being. These kind of measures have at this scale have never been seen in communicable disease control globally. So they are truly historical measures by which the Chinese authorities are, are of course trying to protect um, their, their own citizens with great social, economic and political costs maybe. Um, but they, at the same time they are doing a service for the, the global community where we can actually save uh, some time in terms of preparation for a potential global spread of this virus. The orange bars on this, this graph represent the largest single outbreak that has been seen outside of China uh, linked to one cruise ship um, uh, in port in Yokohama port in, in, in um, Japan where at this stage out of a um, total number of passengers and crews, which is over 3,000, they have detected over 200 cases uh, in this one single event. This event is a signal to us in the world that this virus appears to be behaving in very similar ways than the SARS virus in 2003 and the MERS coronavirus, which means that it has a, a very strong propensity to cause important localized outbreaks in let's say, close settings such as hospitals, hotels, cruise ships, or any similar, similar kind of setting. In Europe, we have had um, uh, slightly over 40 cases um, reported uh, so far, all of them linked directly or indirectly to importation of cases um, from China or in one case from, from Singapore. Um, similarly to the global picture, in the data we, we have from European countries, we do not see an increasing trend here. In the beginning of this uh, graph, you see the date 23rd of January. This was the date when these extraordinary containment measures were put in place in um, China and one assumes that if those measures are effective about 14 days uh, from that date you would start to see some uh, decline in, in, in the numbers detected outside of, of, of China. Um, and this might be the case um, uh, judging from the trends from this epicurve but it is really very early to say anything definitive about the, the European trends. Another illustration of the potential of this virus to cause important chains of transmission, uh, important uh, localized outbreaks, even super spreading outbreaks, is this story of one single individual, a British national who attended a conference in Singapore, not China, in Singapore, met most likely with colleagues from, from um, China in this, this meeting. Um, came back to Europe, uh, spent a few days with family and friends in a ski resort in, in a very beautiful location in France, uh, traveled back to the UK and has since been detected as a, as a positive case of, of coronavirus uh, and on the way managed to infect a number of individuals in the ski lodge, in his family and also two healthcare workers uh, in, in, in UK. Um, so it's very important, especially for healthcare workers, to be aware of this, this disease. 
When you do see suspect cases returning from China at the moment, the areas of presumed community transmission may be expanding over the coming days or, or weeks, who present with acute respiratory infection, especially if they have severe acute respiratory infections, they should be immediately isolated into single rooms, given surgical face masks, and you should protect yourself and other um, members of your team with appropriate uh, personal protective equipment and ensure immediate diagnosis uh, and specimen taken uh, from this individual. I cannot repeat it often enough. It is the healthcare sector, it is the hospitals, it is the primary care centers which are at most risk with, with these outbreaks. We have seen that with the SARS virus, we have seen it with the MERS coronavirus, and, and uh, you may recall that with, with SARS, the whole healthcare system in Toronto was brought to a standstill for a couple of weeks because so many healthcare workers started um, getting the disease. With MERS, we saw a very similar situation in South Korea where one individual who went doctor shopping or diagnosis shopping from one um, healthcare facility to, to another managed to, to infect hundreds of, of, of healthcare workers and patients in, in the healthcare system. So you are all healthcare workers. This is your responsibility to, to keep yourself educated about this virus and have a reasonable level of suspicion on cases that are on, on potential cases, suspect cases returning from, from China or potentially in the future from, from areas adjacent to, to China in, in Asia. Our current risk assessment here at the ECDC is that, that overall the level of risk for EU EEA and the UK populations is low. Um, the, the probability of the infection in our region is considered very low. However, if we do see localized chains of transmission, as I mentioned earlier, the impact of these chains of transmission might be quite high. Therefore, the overall risk assessment we have is low for, for Europe. Um, for people who are traveling or living in areas with presumed ongoing community transmission, and, and here at ECDC we are keeping a, a close eye on the, on the global developments with, with this um, virus and we do update on a daily basis uh, on our website a table where we assess that there is presumed ongoing community transmission based on, on, on official surveillance reports as well as all surrounding information that we can detect through our epidemic intelligence activities. So we consider that uh, in these areas where we presume that there's community transmission, the probability of infection for individuals is moderate to high. Uh, of course, there's a big gradient there. City of Wuhan is where the epicenter of this um, outbreak is ongoing. Province of Hubei has, has nine high numbers of cases reported, but there are increasing cases being reported from other provinces in China. And in the coming days, I expect to see increasing numbers of, of cases reported from countries in Asia with close connections to, to, to China. Um, the impact for the individuals who are infected with this virus are considered to be high. Therefore, we consider the risk um, of this situation for the individuals to be high. As mentioned, we, we keep our uh, situation, updated, uh, situation updates um, on the web page available to everybody. So please do visit it. You will see also our guidance documents um, and our level of readiness there. ECDC has been on um, on increased level of readiness for the last three weeks, uh, working in two shifts in, in public health event level two for the last uh, two weeks. And in terms of our activities, um, we work 24-7 uh, with the bulk of the work um, focusing on, on the daytime activities, um, but we also cover the situation over the weekends. Uh, and the main purpose of our existence is to, to provide a situation awareness for the EU member states, the public health authorities, the ministries of health, uh, provide rapid, rapid risk assessments, um, 
harmonize the case definitions used in, in, in Europe, provide contact tracing guidelines, technical documentation for member states to, to, to use in this situation. Um, we are providing what uh, support we can to the healthcare sector in terms of infection prevention control guidance, um, laboratory guidance for the laboratory system, and we provide where requested support from the member states uh, for communication to the general public, such as uh, template leaflets that can be customized for local languages, for travelers, for healthcare workers, social media updates for the general public, and, and, and so forth. Um, we are in charge of the surveillance of these kind of communicable diseases, so therefore all the European Union member states uh, and the UK uh, report into the early warning and response system and the so-called European surveillance system, TESI, uh, where we can get the, the, the formal updates of the situation for the whole uh, region. All of the activities we are doing right now are focused on containing this disease. We believe, um, as of the 14th of February 2019, that China can still contain this outbreak within its borders and European member states can contain these individual chains of transmission without further spread in, in the community. However, these days we are on, on, a, on a very last phases of, of um, seeing whether this can actually uh, be sustained for a longer time. Within the next week or so, uh, I believe it will become clear on whether the, the extraordinary measures that the Chinese authorities are taking are having an effect and whether we are able to, to stop this virus and outbreak before it becomes a, a pandemic. At the same time, member states and, and health authorities around the world are starting to look at the possibility of a pandemic spread of this virus. Um, and reviewing their influenza pandemic preparedness plans to see which measures can be taken to mitigate the, the impact of a potential pandemic spread of this virus. We are, for the mitigation phase, also in a very precarious position. We do not have a vaccine for this um, virus. Um, we have two or three promising antivirals which have not been tested yet and, and, and trials are ongoing. Uh, for the clinical audience, namely, we have Remdesivir, uh, which has shown some pro uh, promise in the uh, in vitro uh, work so far. And we have got the antiretroviral um, Lopinavir-Ritonavir combination, which is also has shown some promise. Um, and uh, interestingly, chloroquine, which might become a very important uh, compound um, with the pandemic situation has also shown some promise in in um, in vitro situation but today uh, end of february we do not have an effective treatment we do not have a vaccine therefore we and and the, the governments around the world are looking at at which phase at which extent the so-called non-pharmaceutical countermeasures which include social distancing and and personal protective equipment can be used and, and rolled out in, in larger um, settings than in the containment phase. I'd like to thank you for your attention. I hope this has been uh, useful and, and interesting for you. And uh, thank you very much for the, the European Respiratory Society and the Prepare Network for the opportunity to collaborate on, on this. Um, the work that I've presented is coming from a very large group of, of technical experts here at ECDC under the, the crisis management organization, so we call it the PHE technical team. So I'd like to also thank my colleagues for, for working, working day and night to, to keep us all updated on, on the situation.